Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the 4PL Play for Fame TT Esports July Qualifier number four. We have got Elo Hell facing off against Acer, and in my good opinion, polls. Yes, it's very good. It's not just an opinion. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a good game. What do you think? Yeah, I, it's going to be absolutely awesome. And hello, Fizzband coming out. That is interesting. Very, very interesting. Not many times you see a Fizzband out. Like, weird. Okay, Ooh, interesting. I have a problem. I need one of these guys on my friends list. Oh, that is an issue. That is, uh. that is an issue. I will get that fixed for you shortly. Uh, if you just go ahead and take the buns of picks, I will... Alrighty then. Well... I apologize, by the way. Well, yeah, you know, a Fizz Band coming out, you don't see it, really, at all. But, I mean, he's a very good counter for the likes of a Carthus. So, well, in lane. Um, so, I think, I don't know, maybe they're going with Carthus, I don't know. But a Zyra Band coming out from Acer, maybe just watch the last game. Shushe Zyra is scary. Very, very scary. Gragas Band out as well first, we were surprised to see that. Um, that he was actually banned last game, am I correct? I think he's busy. I will just take it. But uh, Elo Hell, they have banned out Lee Sin and Yorick. And we are just waiting for the last one. And it's going to be Vladimir. So, I mean, uh, Yorick, he's very, very uh, annoying, <laughs> to say the least, at the top lane. Obviously, with the harass from the goals. Uh, Lee Sin, very good towards that early game period. Scales off a little bit towards the late. Vladimir, all around, is a very good champion as well. Malphite has not been banned out, so he's going to get picked up straight away, along with the Shen as well, and Orianna. So, I mean, we've got Malphite, Shen, and Orianna in the mix right now. And, well, Malphite has a huge presence in team fights with his ultimate, of course, and is so, so good with them ganks coming in as well. Orianna, of course, as well. Very, very good in that mid lane. Nunu pick on the horizon. And Shen, well, his global presence is absolutely tremendous. Corky, AD carry coming out. Well, probably one of the two best AD carries at the moment due to his scaling. Scales so well towards the late game, along with everything else. And back over towards Elo Hell. Let me just have a quick look if I could quickly get anyone on the friends list. Um, um, Pulse, any update? Well, the person I've messaged you. Sorry? And clients. Clients. He... Ah, buddy. There we go. Nice. Thank you, Pulse. You are... No problem. ...a saver. Virtual uh, yeah. Brofist. So, what, okay. What do you think? What do I think of just, like, the, the universe I mean, in general? Or, you know, like, the meaning of life? Or... <laughs> Malphite, Orianna, Shen. And I think they were all banned. Like, the last game we actually saw. Uh, a Fizz ban coming out. A Gragas ban as well, again. A Yorick ban. What? Yeah, that's interesting. Like, weird bands all over the board. I mean, they're tier 1 picks, but they're maybe not, like, the picks that you would expect to see. I mean, maybe they're, like, specific against these particular teams, but... Very interesting, very interesting. I know that Yorick is running a lot of comms, so you can run him bottom lane, you can do all sorts of janky things, but we will have Shyvana picked up along with Galileo. So it'll be interesting to see where Shyvana will go, along with Shen, maybe Shen top, maybe Shyvana jungle will make a lot of sense, considering Acer play like at Moscow 5, where they're super aggressive all over the board, and they all have a lot of mobility. So you have the Nunu, you have Corky with the Valkyrie, and we'll have the Blood Boil on from Nunu as well. You have Shen, who's kind of mobile with his global ultimate, Shyvana with the Burnout as well, and and Galio with the Righteous Gust, so a lot of mobility coming in from Acer, looking for that punish comp, which is pretty much what Moscow Fire do all the time. And it's kind of bad because Acer will always be in the shadow of Moscow Fire because of their playstyles, but they're equally as good. Well, maybe not as equally, but they are definitely one of the best teams out there at this moment in time. Yeah, I mean, they've got a cannon pick possibly, not sure if they logged in, maybe going AD cannon. Uh, I mean, for that Galio, uh, I, I love to see a Galio in any lineup. I mean, his ultimate brings so much to the table, such a great champion all around, can really push lanes, just constantly push, 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 especially with that blue buff. Galio with a blue buff, just constantly pushing that lane, can get very, very annoying. But no, they have switched it over for an Udia. Yeah, definitely. So I'm looking at the picks at the moment. Is there anyone you want to have a look at and with the runes and masteries wise? Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you decide that. You can decide. Ooh, oh, I thought choices, you have the choices. Pleasure. Yeah, man. Okay, let's take a look at Acer 760 on Shyvana. It would fail me now, client. Okay, <laughs> so that will be health plus 78, level one, no scaling, 12 magic resist, and 15 
attack speed and then plus 13 armor. In the masteries it will be 921 going right down to Juggernaut into Honor Guard, the Enlightenment, Indomitable as well. Not going for the Bladed Armor. Interesting. We'll be taking the Arcane Knowledge however, which makes sense because a lot of the damage comes from that burnout. Absolutely. I am just on a bit of a light delay. I've actually forgot all the picks, like, straight away. So I have to wait until we're on the uh, the home tab thing. Um, but, I mean, uh, bot lanes. I think bot lane was... It wasn't Nunu and Corky? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Nunu and Corky up against a Tarek and a Graves. I mean, that burst from Graves, obviously, is going to be very, very good. Uh, especially with the stun coming out from Tarek as well. So I think bot lane... I'm going to give it to Elo Hell here, but you cannot deny a Corky. I mean, Corky all around is a great, great champion. And Nunu with that Blood Boil as well is going to be very, very annoying. Level 6 as well with that Ultimate. And the constant harass from the Ice Balls as well. So, I was just going to ask you your opinion on that bot lane. How you think that's really going to go? I would, but we need to skip to a quick commercial break right now. So, we'll be back in the git. Uh, back in the git. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and we will be carrying on this conversation. So, anyway, guys, have a good one. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 4PL Play for Fame TT Esports July Qualifier number 4. We have got Elo Hell nice. up a get... I, I, you know, I just try to... It gets quicker every time. But we have got Elo Hell up against Acer, and this is definitely going to be a great, great game. Personally, yeah, that's what I think. 
Yeah, I, I think a lot of people would agree with you on that one. It's not one of those statements which is just like very controversial. I think it is <laughs> going to be a very good game. And Acer versus Edo Hell. So I made a comparison with Acer being with the same style as Moscow 5. And that's certainly the comp they've gone for. They always go with the mobility comp where they can punish. They have great roaming capability when it gets into that team fight and roaming stage. They are so, so strong. And they have king um, invades basically when... Galio hits 6, so they are so strong in that mid game, and that's always what they go for. I know teams like Acer and Moscow 5 really hate the late game, they want to just get it over in mid game just by being hyper aggressive, and it looks like Elo Hell potentially looking for this invade on to Acer's bottom lane, Puki style. Oh god, the flash has been burnt straight away, but if Tarek can connect one stun, they might be able to follow it up. But the answer is no, Corky's going to go back, but that flash is going to be burnt, and well, Expect to see Corky very, very passive in his lane until that flash comes up. Because the last thing you want to do is be on the opposite end of a Tarek stun. And then Graves just doing all kinds of damage to you. But Shivana and Galio just going to stay in the mid lane. Galio just very cautiously milling about uh, near these bushes and the rave camp. Of course, Shivana's going to just stay right in the middle of that one. And I think Elo Hell... Yeah, that, I think they're just going to go towards the race. They're going to see Shivana. Shivana has picked up very quickly indeed, but Udia is there. Ground slam from Malphite. But Shivana has already got that Wraith camp. And probably just going to go towards this blue buff, maybe. And the red is going to get stolen from Elo Hell, so a nice start for them. Yeah, one of the things they have to be careful about, though, is the fact that Shyvana could quite easily go blue, just gets a decent pull from Shen, and go straight up to... Yeah, it looks like he's going to do some damage to it as well, and go straight to their red. That will be an instant level 3, and then Udia will feel the pain. Actually, she's going to go ahead and smite it, so maybe not. Yeah, I definitely think that would have definitely happened, you know, if, uh, if Shen helped her out a little bit more, but Shen has had to go back to lane, so the farming phase will begin. Malphite going to cross back over towards his jungle and is going to get this Wraith camp after seeing that red. You know, obviously he wants to go straight towards his red because the first thing you have in mind is after you steal someone's camp, it's like they might resort going to mine. So I have to get there straight away. He's going to find it's going to be up. He's going to be very happy and he's just going to wait about. But I asked you a question, you know, before we went into the game, Pulse, about that bot lane. And especially as Corky has now burnt that flash, what way do you think this is definitely going to go and what, for what team? Well, of course, as you said, if one team lands a stun, well, that being Grom, then Pain from Graves. I don't think he has a lot of burst potential pre-6 because Pukki Style will have the range on him. He has got 550 to 525, I believe. So he will have the early game advantage, especially with Nunu, e easy to uh, kite, great kiting ability. But as soon as the turn on 6, Elo Hell will have the advantage because it's basically, yeah, stun, burst, dead. Either one of them. Though Nunu is naturally tanky, so in a prolonged trade, they might actually win it. But of course, that is the counter, straight up burst. So I don't think we'll see too much action down there until 6, but we might uh, see a kill potentially from Acer. Acer, of course, trying to get to that mid game where they are strongest and potentially go for those really aggressive invades. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, you're not really going to see the true side of Graves until you hit that level 6 and that burst really does come out. So I think before that, it's just going to be a farming phase. I mean, Acer are actually pushed up this lane, that Nunu and Corky combination coming into effect. And Malphite has gone towards his own red buff. Did actually leave that before, crossed over towards the blue, so he's going to get a nice reset for that. And now he's going to set his sights towards top lane, but that is pushed rather heavy. And Shen is there, but Malphite's going to go there regardless. Although the lane is actually pushing as well for Elo Hell. So he might just back away here, not completely sure, unless Shen decides to maybe pounce on Udia and uh, try and chase him down and just try and bait him out. But no, Malphite is going to back away. As mid, it looks like Shivana is coming in and putting a whole load of damage down on towards Shushe. Shushe forced to flash away as Malphite is going on towards the mid now. Gallo is rather low here, so Veggie going to try and capitalize on it maybe with a gank. He is going to come straight out of them bushes, and I don't think he's going to catch Malphite. Well, yeah, he will catch him just with ability, but that is about it. As Udia and Shen are going to have a little face off at top. But apart from that, a couple ganks coming in, but no real damage being dealt. Except for a flash, of course, from Shushe. Of course. Meanwhile, bottom Fuki style flashing up red, taking a lot of damage. Stun goes Absolutely. down and the flash. Yeah, and the stun coming in from Tarek, just like you said. And the ignite as well, the flash and the last hit from Graves, and there's the first blood. And one of the last people you want to give first blood is Graves. Graves is an absolute monster. And well, he's going to be very happy, and that was great, great teamwork from, uh, 
from uh, Graves and Tarek at that bot lane. Brilliant stun and a nice flash coming in from Graves to finish the kill off. Yeah, the very scary thing is that now Graves is going to hit 6 before Corky, and therefore he has the burst, he doesn't have the same trading power, and it's really, really going to hurt. Host Hand's going to 100% catalyze on this when um, when that turns up, so it'll be quite difficult for him in that sort of window of opportunity for Graves. I'm just waiting to see what happens. Obviously, Acer are very difficult to put behind. You can put them behind by a couple hundred gold, couple thousand gold, but they'll more than make up for it in that team fighting phase. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when Graves hits that level 6, expect to be a fire bot lane straight away. Graves is in the driver's seat right now at the bot lane, but that can change at any time. Uh, so top lane has basically just been trade between Udia and Shen, basically what you see all the time. How's the CS looking at the top lane? Shen is going to be rocking 41, Udia with 29. And I'm quite surprised because Udia has been pushing that lane constantly, um, except for the uh, the past minute or so where Shen has really been taking charge. And Udia, uh, in comparison with Shen, not doing as great. I mean, it's not a huge difference. You can definitely come back from it. I'm just, I'm just surprised. As it looks like, actually, Shushe is going to burn his armor straight in towards the middle and the Ignite as well. Is it going to be enough, though, as uh, Galio will actually escape there? So an Ignite being burnt from Shushe and the armor as well. Yeah, definitely. With that lane at the top, it's the most passive lane in the world. Like, both of those picks are extremely safe. It's a bit like Riven and a bit like Kennen. They're extremely safe picks. I mean, nothing really is going to happen. I think the most, pretty much the most passive lane ever, Udyr and then Shen. Like, no one's going to deal enough damage to make any dents in the opponent without the, opposite, uh, of the opposition just sustaining through it. So, as you said, not too much going to happen up there. Looking for the invade, however, Benji and Suche. Suche doesn't have too much mana though, will he be able to finish this off? He's going to have to save the command protect. Smite goes down, yeah, they see Salivar and they're just like, okay, just smite it and run, we'll get we'll get you our blue, I'll be fine. But even so, that was a massive hit, really Sigalio, who needs it to become that broken lane and just have that mid-game dominance. So that's really good, that two-man invade just kind of stopped them and prolonged the phase where Acer are trying to slip into. Yeah, they really needed to get out there at blue, because obviously Galio still has his old as well. He's he did uh, just uh, hit level 6 in bot lane. Just like you said, Corky is going to land a kill as uh, Nunu and both Corky are going to go on towards this Tarek. Tarek forced to flash away. Shen actually uses ultimate there. I completely missed that. But Pulse again, saving the day. You, you carry me, man, in casts. You like Spider sensors. Spider man, yeah, Spider -Man exactly, sensors. Man. But uh, Shivana was caught and... It's not Shivana. Well, Shivana was caught. Uh, with that ward. Anyway, Malphite is going to come straight down in between five players of Acer. Acer setting up for this dragon. Flash away from Malphite. Don't want to risk anything. Want to better be safe than sorry. As uh, they are... Sh well, they should get this dragon, no problem. Yep, definitely. So they're going to pick up the dragon. Very nice indeed. Shivana got a last hit that one. As the blue buff is going to potentially get got from Malphite. But Acer coming in for the invade here, especially... This is exactly what they needed to do, but... Oh, not Olaf. Why am, I, why am I saying Olaf? Olaf isn't in the team, but Oriana is going to pop the armor off after the Galio ult, and Graves could be in a bit of trouble now as the Nunu ult is going up, but Nunu is going to fall, and Oriana with a kill on towards Corky. Shivana having to ultimate away, but there's the, uh, the quick dash from Graves there. Tarek is going to try and chase down that... No, he's just going to put a ward in that bridge. But there's the dragon. Three kills to three, and exactly even on gold. Yeah, Acer underestimated their strength right there. They got a tower for a Drake, okay, but they definitely underestimated their power completely because Acer 760 had come back, and they lost a lot, a large chunk of their of their strength right there. Absolutely, top laner looks like the tower. Well, the first tower has been got from Udia as well, so it's going to be Shen versus Udia right now. But Udia, one of them champions, you can just keep escaping and just running and running and running. The Usain Bolt of League of Legends, I like to call him. But uh, it looks like Tarek is going to go back after the lane has been pushed. Is Graves going to go back as well? It looks likely. Graves is currently on 51 CS to Corky's 55, so Corky just being, he's just out ahead just a little bit. As Galio is on 50, Oriana with 73, so Oriana definitely winning that trade. And, well, nothing else really happened. I mean, the Dragon, and uh, we haven't really seen any real successful ganks, except for that Shen Armor coming in at the bot lane. And apart from that, it's just been the Dragon fight. So, I mean, ganks not making a huge part of this game at the moment, but they could easily change at any time. There was a ward in that bush, so Galio is going to be spotted right there. Zidia is 
going to cross over and chase down this free strong lineup. Make that four as Corky's going to come into play as well. But they're going to be too fast. They're going to be able to get away from Galio with Galio's E. And I'm not sure. Will there be a fight? Will there not? Oriana is going to uh, see and get vision off Shivana there. As Idiot is going to come around the corner, get vision once again. And, uh, well, they're just teasing me right now. They, they keep seeing everybody that, you know, they go to run in, they're like, oh, nah. Like, yeah, nah. But Idiot is going to go on towards Nunu now, but Nunu should be able to get away no problem whatsoever. And I think it's just going to be a face-off. Yeah, definitely. And, um... I, I was just uh, thinking, it was a pity that Hosan was not playing... Actually, meanwhile, bottom. Yeah, I mean, bottom lane, okay. Valkyrie away from Corky, but yeah, yeah, should be fine. I was, I was saying it's a pity Hosan wasn't playing on Udi because he was saying he's like Hussein Bolt, so it'd be Hosan Bolt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the puns! Oh, man. But Grom looking for the stun there. Will Hosan follow up with the damage? And he should be able to get this kill. Tiagro coming in as well, but we'll get away. So a nice kill and pick up for Graves. As we said, that burst damage coming in and the Tarek's done as well on an already weakened Corky. So really nice stuff out of that bot lane. Exactly what we said. Yeah, definitely. So, absolutely amazing play all over the board. And honestly, at the moment, Elo how are pulling slightly ahead. I'm just looking at the scaling from both teams. I mean, Acer are Acer. Like, they're going to pull ahead. And as before, I didn't get a chance to say it, but they went again for the three-man invade, which is really their key element, which keeps them in games. However, Elo... Elo Hell made a good counter push because usually what happens is Acer or Moscow Five they're going for those three man invades and the other team just keels over because they're so scared of like the Selva ultimate and then like all the pressure they can bring. But Elo Hell stood the ground and actually counter pushed, which is really good basically. They have to apply the pressure to stop them just getting rolled over. Like that's where Acer's strength lies, just being really hyper aggressive and hoping the enemy gets scared and runs away. So yeah, Kickers actually going for 760. Absolutely, yeah. I was just actually watching uh, Galio and Shivana just in case they made a move towards Udia there because obviously Udia was going on towards Shen. So uh, it could have been possible, but they are going to come into lane now. Oriana is in the mix as well, along with Malphite. We could see a fight here as bot lane. There is action unfolding as it looks like Tarek could fight the dust. Ice ball out. Graves is going to have to go under the tower as well. And Tarek will just escape with uh, just about two bars of his HP left up standing and well still it stands at four to three no real exchanges coming in from the top lane as well although there was basically a 4v no it was a 3v3 at the top lane apologies but uh, yeah i mean it's just there's been a lot of close kills they just haven't been finished off and i'm just waiting for that really big big team fight to really just define this game and to really just s start the snowballing so to speak for sure, Acer always usually take the team where they can punish. They're looking for Elo Hell to make a mistake so they can mobilize, pick up a kill, and then make a push, make a timing push. But they don't usually like to go for the straight up team fights. They usually like to go for those like 3v3s, 4v3s, those sorts of nice sort of skirmishes where Gali was really strong, Shaivan is really strong, Shen's really strong. All of their team comp is just exceptionally strong. They don't like to go for the full 5v5s because they're usually weaker. Like, look at the team. You have Sushi, Oriana, and then Veggie, Malphi. Classic Wombo combo. And you just have to look at all the other CC and just burst damage to follow. So, that being said, Acer are looking for the picks. But they're not being too yeah. aggressive this game. Yeah, top, uh, bot lane, it looks like Malphite is going to pop his armor as well, and the armor going to finish off from Graves. Tarek going very low, Valkyrie away from Corky to try and escape. As Graves will land a kill on towards Nunu, Galio will go down in the meantime in mid as well from Oriana. So two kills going out quickly indeed in the space of about 10 seconds there. You know, Mathematician just got that on point. 10 seconds, Pulse. Outstanding, seconds. outstanding. So it looks like Elo Hell grouping up right now and looking to do do something mid. Honestly, Elo Hell are acting a lot like Acer, going, grouping up in those small skirmishes and winning them. Acer right now are just, I don't know, they seem really sporadic. They're looking to push top and okay, but now Bonner's being pushed in and they're taking Drake as well. Will Long Pro be able to do anything? Sushi is also there. Also goes down by Shen. Exactly, Shen is coming in, so is Shivana as well. Graves is going to get shut down straight away. Galio is coming into the mix as well. Elo Hell have to try and get away here because if Galio does land on at least three of them, they're probably going to die, let's be honest. As the Ice Ball does come out on towards Idia, but it looks like Dragon is going to go down 
and it's not going to be for Elo Hell, it's going to be for Acer. Hello Mobility, and that's where Acer are strongest. Just when it like looked like Acer were just off their game, boom, there it is. Just Acer coming in from all angles, and it's just almost like fighting against a swarm. It's really dispiriting, because it, it's just like you don't know where they are. They have mega high mobility, it's absolutely insane, and they just closed around them. Picked up the kill onto Hosan, picked up Drake, and now they're once again ahead from what it looked like 2k behind. They were losing, so mobility, man. Aggressive teams with mobility is really scary when you give it to Acer. Yeah, that's exactly what's good about Shen as well. I mean, you know, he could just be farming, 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 and then boom, he's just in the team fight all of a sudden, just right in your face. And I can't remember, I think it was M5, I can't remember who was running it, was running Shen, and at the end of the game, because it was just split pushing all the time, he ended up with like 4 to 5 CS and like 10 kills. It was absolutely insane. And, you know, that's the good thing about Shen, you know, that global ultimate coming into effect, jumped straight in there, and the dragon, then Shivana ulted in as well. And they finished off Graze within an instant. So, really nice stuff coming out from Acer, picking up that Dragon. 1k in it right now. And, well, all players going to go to the lanes. The only tower, well, two towers have fallen. One in mid and one at the top lane. 16, nearly 17 minutes through. And, yep, yeah, they're just going to go back to the lanes and farm it up. Elo Hell have a really nice mid-game team, just looking at bottom just in case anything happens, have a really nice mid-game team. So Veggie and then Sushi, we've already spoken about this. However, Acer have a really nice mid-game team as well, and probably arguably better late game. So if they draw this out, they're still going to lose, but on the flip side, Acer are always going to be very aggressive. We know this because that's their playstyle. So how are Elo Hell going to react? That is the question. And it's still in laning phase, honestly. And with games like this, I swear, every time you watch an aggressive team like Acer or Moscow 5 and TMS case sometimes as well, it always feels like the game has gone on for longer. It's 17 minutes 30 into the game, it feels like 30. Yeah, absolutely. I, they just stay in lane for so long. It's just farm, 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 farm. And then you get about 10 to 20 minutes of non-stop action. It's like a volcano. You know, it just erupts. And that's exactly what I see with these games. But... I mean, that's what I hope for anyway. I love these kind of games, you know, the first 20, 30 minutes of them farming, blah, 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 you know, it can get quite tedious, but, you know, it makes up for that when all action and all hell just breaks loose. Anyway, Galio is going to be getting this blue buff, surely, from Shivana. And uh, that's that's another factor that's just gonna that's just gonna be the huge factor of Acer. If Galio can land a perfectly timed ult, then Shivana goes straight into the mix as well. Then you got Shen, then you got Corky on the outside, then Nunu's ultimate as well. It's just gonna be Nuke, Nuke Station. Haha, <laughs> New Nuke. Sorry, had to oh, be done. I, I see what you said. Yeah, there. so we do have Celebrus <laughs> pushing down mid as well. And I'm not surprised Acer aren't like grouping up because it is a much earlier in the game than I thought it was until I looked at the time and just refreshed my memory. You can't get carried away in that respect. So, yeah, really, I'm surprised though that we still haven't seen Acer go for those three man invades. I think they were really just dispirited by seeing Elo Hell push them away so easily. Like, they didn't take it lying down. It was like, okay, you're going to three man invade, well, we're going to mobilize and push you back and then invade you. So, they were like, okay, maybe we're a bit weaker than them now, we'll just let's get a couple more kills, get a few more pick-offs, farm up a bit, and then let's group up again. And what? 19-minute Baron from Elo Hell, this oh, is ballsy God. play. Well, I mean, Corky's bot lane, still farming, so they have the chance, but uh, Shen was caught out there, but they are they going to go back towards the Baron? Yes, they are. No, they are going to just uh, back away now. As Galio is there as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I was kind of scratching my head there. I was like, hmm, this could work. Corky's bot lane. But, uh, you know, Shen was uh, caught there. You know, he could just almost straight in at any time. Galio was around. You know, all four players were there. And even without Corky, they can just completely shut down that team. Especially with a perfectly landed Galio ult. And, uh, yeah, and the Nuno as well. Definitely, Corky's going to go ahead and back up. I think more than anything, it was like a bait, just to see if yeah. they would go near them. There's like, there's no way they haven't got this warded. Let's go Baron and try and get a kill from it. Because they have a nice pick team. I mean, look at it. They have so much straight up single target CC. And Suche moving in on 760. Yeah, absolutely, Shivana is going to ult straight in as well. And Oriana is in the mix and has to flash away. Udia very low as well. Uh, where is Galio? He's going to speed himself up. Is he going to be able to connect this as he's going to go straight in with that shield? He's going to flash in. He's going to land the armor on towards Udia. Misses the Q and won't be able to finish him off. But now, 
Oriana has to try and run away. Will she be able to get away in time to just take tower aggro? But no, the flash coming in from LOL Pro. And well, there's the kill. 760 will pick it up in the form of Shen on towards Oriana. While Graves and Tarek push this mid lane, Corky out bot lane all alone. Let me have a look at Corky, Corky's farm actually. 160 to so Graves 135. I mean, Corky has just been bot lane while everything's been happening. And like you said, Acer are just playing very safe right now. You know, they're not pushing the envelope too much. They're not overdoing it. You know, they're playing very, very safe. Yeah, definitely. Just until the point where they're stronger, because teams like this, they get those small victories, and then it's before you know it, they go for the team fight, and then they ace you. And it's like, where did that come from? It's because small victories, you don't really see it as like a massive loss, but bring up ten of them, that's like two lost team fights, and it's more than it is basically more than you think it is. It's a psychological warfare, and then they know when they're ahead, and then they go for Ooh. it. Paul's gone down by Elo Hell, uh, that being from Kickers saying sick. Maybe toilet break or something. Oh, no, they're ready again. Maybe just need to do Itch's groin or something. Oh, come on. Come Hello, on, it, it, it's, it's a viable it's excuse. It's to put the record on for Dora the Explorer. Oh, right, yeah, oh, of course. It's starting on, right now. Dora. What time is it? It's about I 10 minutes to 9, so... Maybe I'm in Australia. In huh? I'm, t I'm hot in my room. Before I just throw it out there. Innuendos. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> a little help. Looking to pose around this uh, poise around this Drake along with Acer. I mean, Acer are going to flock to it like literally a, a swarm of hornets. They've got to be careful. I mean, Shen's top. Exactly. They just have that teleport. He's got that teleport up, but the dragon has gone down. Are they going to look for an engage? Gallo going to leave the point, but no, Shivana's just got to go balls deep. Hello, I'm Shivana, but no! On again, absolutely nuke at Oriana. Oh, perfectly, but here comes Shen straight in your face. Galio not landing the armor on towards Oriana or uh, Graves, I don't think, but that's not going to ma matter. As Galio will pick up two in the form of Malphite and Udia. Corky will pick one up as well. Graves will fall, and a great fight there. And Grom could be going down as well, definitely looks likely. And well, the answer is yes to that one. Tarek will go down to a 4 to 0 exchange for Acer. Just like you said, they played it safe, they they waited until they were strong enough, they waited until they had the opportunity, and they pounced, and it worked. All victories add up very, very quickly, and they will now be pushing down mid. Suche looking to try and uh, block them here. Oh, the damage from Galio, it wow. stings. Whoa, the tower die from 760. Suche looking for the last auto attack, and the faint will block that command attack. Wow, that was some clutch play from 760. Wow. Just, just wowzers. 760, the man. Yeah, man. I don't get uh, it, right? He's a, oh, idiot. Oh, idiot. Destroyer he wants red bar and he wants blood. But he's not going to get it. <laughs> or is he? Malfoy's going to come into the mix. The shard goes down. Shirelia's as well. Pop. Brown slam. But the Valkyrie away from Corky. Is Malfoy going to burn his ultimate? Or is it down? He is down for another 35 seconds. So I don't think that he's going to chase him down for 35 seconds. And now, maybe... Just maybe are we going to see a Baron? Idiot is going to take a charge and point as Baron is going to be a nasty guy and just throw him up in the air. I mean, is Galio oh, up? Yes, it is. So that can be used. Slow going down. And that was very, very risky stuff from Elo Hell right there. I mean, all that took... Uh, wait, let me have a look. Shen's ult wasn't up. So I think if Shen's ult was up, Acer definitely would have went in there. And then Galio could have went in as well. You know, the ult coming in, and that would have been a complete nuke on Elo Hell, but Shen's ultimate wasn't up, so they didn't want to risk it. Yeah, for sure. And that laugh from Salva is absolutely amazing. I don't know if you heard it. It was tier 1 material. Anywho, <laughs> um, we do have... Sushi was bottom lane at the time, so it was 4 versus 4 anyway. Also, I get the feeling that Elo Hell's team is starting to scale off, and it looks like um, 760, Acer... And the rest of the team are going on Baron. They saw Oriam. Awesome. Ultimate goes down by Supros as well. Grom looking for the steal, you know, because Tarek is, uh, is, is the master of those steals. Absolutely. Malphite is on there as well. Baron has gone down. Aisa. Wow. Galio has burned that ultimate. Elo Hell knows it. They're going to search for blood. As Malphite's going to go on towards the carries. And there's the Oriana. Oh, knocking them all up. And the burst damage from Graves is great. Shin. Will pick up a kill on the form of Tarek. Galio will get a kill as well, but Graves got to fight back. But Corky's like, nope, Chunk Tester once again. 
and he'll go down. Oriana as well. Nuna will fall. And uh, Malphite is going to get chased down from Corky. Is he going to go for this tower dive? The answer is no. So, there is a Baron for Acer. Three kills. Did lose two in that exchange though, but the main point of that is they had one up with the kill, the kill difference plus a Baron. Yeah, and plus they had the Corky, which, you know, if you have your AD carry alive, you can take objectives, that's how it works. And Pocky Style most likely probably will go top, I mean, they could probably just face tank that. They probably don't want to overstay, but there's no massive objectives to really avoid. Sullivan just laughing in their faces, you know, because demoralizing effect and all, but so they're going to go ahead and farm that top turret. Uh, bottom lane did fall as well as those minions, but it's a tier 3 turret, not worth too much at this stage apart from the global gold. So, uh, yeah, Acer are mobilizing right now, and this is where they're in their prime. And Elo Hell are scaling off in a composition. Acer only really gets stronger, and Acer are always going to be stronger in the roaming, in the fluidity stage where they're, they're just, yeah, they're so well oiled. So, what can Elo Hell do? Very difficult. I don't know. But uh, it looks like Udia is going to go for this red still. The ward is in that bush as well. Grom is there just for backup, just in case Shivana's going to come around the corner, try and get this one back. But here comes five strong, and uh, that forces Shivana to burn her nice. ultimate straight over that wall. Gallo going to recall. Australia's popped once again just to uh, speed Elo Hell up. Go towards this mid lane. Shen is, on the other hand, going to go towards top lane. How much CS has Shane got? 172. Tudia's 152. Gallio has 193. To Oriana's 237. Wow, Shushe. Wow, that farm. That's Great. pretty strong. I've seen a lot of Oriana's do really well on farming. And it's very, very interesting. But I guess it's because you have the command attack and then dissonant. Great clear for those wolves and uh, with the race as well. So you do have that potential to just farm everything. So, yeah. Once again, it's just what can Elo Hell do? It's their move. They can wait. They can wait until Baron's off. But really... It's only going to get stronger. So, uh, mm. I think Elo Hell, they really need to just catch someone from Acer, but, you know, Acer being Acer, I, I don't think that's going to happen at all. Yeah, the main issue with a picking comp against a mobility comp is like, okay, you get the pick, or can you kill them fast enough before the, the Hornets just swarm into your position? Because they have that high mobility, they'll be there in approximately 4 or 5 seconds. So, can you kill them fast enough? And they're all pretty tanky right now and they're pr staying pretty close to each other as well and here is the split pushing from a 760 horrible position to be in being behind and being split pushed on opposite sides of the map and that's the great thing about shen you know split pushing a boss so to speak smoke stream coming in from a graze ground slam as well galio is straight in the middle knock up from malphite oriana Ulmer coming into effect as well nunu gonna pop his ult as the uh, hourglass was actually popped from galio to stop that burst damage coming in and that's definitely gonna help him as corky is gonna pick up one kill nunu with one as well oriana gonna fight back but uh she's gonna fall despite getting a kill and galio is just gonna finish that one off and where is graves well Graves is roaming around. Come around the corner, got to try and pick up a kill on towards 760. And <sighs> no. Will that be game? Can they push the victory? They have a minion stack there, they have the super minion there as well. Do they have the down trip? They've lost Pookie style. And they still have that long pro and 760. They have some pretty decent damage on that turret. They are chunking down pretty quickly. Veggie's going to be up soon. Yep, Veggie on Malphite, kick us as well. Will they be able to pick up the second turret? Scary. Scary Rock on the way. No, they cannot. Okay. Scary Rock. Scary Rock. I never thought I'd say that sentence in my life, but there you have it. Well, I mean, you could kind of put that in perspective in real life. I mean, if a rock comes at you, you're going to run away, right? Well, it depends. Does it have legs or is it falling from the sky? Um, either, to be honest. I think a rock's pretty deadly. <laughs> if it was on its legs, it would definitely be more scarier. But if it was coming at you, I think uh, I'd probably just ditch wherever I was at. I just... You know, you know, like when you take a bullet for someone, you just jump straight in the mm -hmm. way. I just do that, but away from the bullet. <laughs> right. So, it? so basically, that's just cowardice and running away. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't, you can't mask it from me, NZ. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> but uh, Ace is gonna pick up this dragon. As Malphite is bot lane, they have got complete control now. They've got one tower down right next to the Nexus and half of the other one, but that should regen no problem. The inhibitor in the mid down as well, so. Even a back door is on the cards, especially if they've got the likes of a cork. You can go straight in, finish it, bam. 
But uh, I think, you know, they're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Win another team fight and try and finish it off. Yeah, and also the thing with Mobility Comp, when it gets ahead, again, you have the Shen split pushing, but there's also the fact that if you make one wrong decision, then you're going to be picked up. I'm surprised we don't see more aggressive wards coming from Acer, but mind you, all of them are pretty much getting to full build. They don't have the spots for wards. Like, yeah, here we go, Nunu picking up an entire stack because he needs to even up for the rest of the team. Gali is the only one with a free slot. He probably needs that for something else himself. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult for them, but again, they're looking for the aggressive wards for the pick, and... Elo Hell are just in a bad position all over the place. They, as you said, you need to get a pick, but it's hard when you lack vision and you're being pushed in yourself. Absolutely. Shreyas has been popped from Malphite. Uh, there was some threat from Gallia going straight in with our armor, of course. Very deadly indeed. Oriana is bot lane, so she's going to be very slow to this fight. He's actually going to recall instead of just running back. So if Acer wants to pounce now, I would do it now. Because Oriana is on her way back as Gallio is going to take a bit of damage, he's going to get focused down, but the inhibitor is going to go down regardless, and here comes all the ult that's being burned, Galio ult, Nunu ult, Oriana ult, and every single person's ult is being burnt in a team fight. Galio with one kill, Corky with another, Malphite and Graves both fall, and Shushe will bite the dust any second now, well that second has come, Udia having to flash away to get away, but that is definitely going to be game, as the GA does come up for Shivana. so she finishes with no deaths, that's always nice. That is very, very impressive considering how aggressive LOL Pro has been in this game. That, of course, being Dota Pro after the name change and GG, well played. Absolutely incredible game. A very nice game indeed. You know, it was very slow towards the start, just like you said it was going to be. And then, just like we said, it was like a volcano, just erupted with action. It was a really nice game. I think we have some Facebook stuff and that skydiving thing. Uh. Oh yeah, so tomorrow guys is going to be the Elite of Europe and do you, as a viewer you have a chance to go skydiving with Ocelot. You will be filmed and you could potentially die, but um, <laughs> you, you will be dying with Ocelot, so you know, it, it's, it's good stuff. And Bass. I, and Bass, and Bass, yeah. Just, um, that, that could be dodgy being on the plane with Bass. Guy. <laughs> wow. Uh, he, you're you're going to get murdered Bass very, very soon. He's listening right now and he's going to me, murder you. Me and you. Bass love each other, but... I'm not convinced. But any, anyway, if you want to check, if you want to check me out. I'm on Watch Your Pulse Facebook slash Watch Your Pulse. Same for my YouTube and NZ. Where can we check you out? Uh, it is going to be NZ with two E's and YouTube.com slash NRA TV. Okay, and do you want to announce the 4PL Facebook and the Chaos TV Facebook as well? I literally just come in, so I'm not quite sure on the 4PL one, but the Chaos TV one, I think, is just Chaos TV. Um. Facebook.com slash 4pl.lol We apologize for that. Uh, Hex, have we got a game scheduled next? Do we know who it's going to be? Alright, so me and Pulse have a little break, so do you guys and Hex, of course. So the next game is going to be Acer up against either Drub Esports or Kick Esports. So, should be a good game. I hope. Mm -hmm. SK did lose against Drub, so... Oh, yeah. Hmm. Who have they got in their lineup? Wow, they have loads of people in their lineup. Oh, uh, wow. How many people are in their team? There's like... Wait, let me count this. Yes, I can count, guys. I did go to school. Really? Wow. That's amazing. 14. Oh, heck, sick. Come on. But Eat yeah. into it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We will be right back, guys. It is going to be um, Acer up against either Drub Esports or Kick Esports in the 4PL Play for Fame TT Esports July qualifier number four. And see you soon.